I would like to share a thought that is more on a personal level. Over the last few months, death has uh, come to visit us as a family, myself also as a son. And uh, it was very difficult uh, to get hit from all sides by death of father figures that I had in my life. And uh, nevertheless, I must say, I never lost hope. And I'd like to uh, remind us all of this very important passage from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. From verse 17 it says, If Christ is not risen, your faith is futile. You're still in your sins. Then also those who have fallen asleep, those who died, all those that died in the last few months in my life, those who knew Christ and yet they died. The Bible says, even they have fallen asleep, they just perished. But if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men the most pitiable. In other words, there is nothing more, uh, I guess, ridiculous in having our faith today without the emphasis on the resurrection of the Lord, which, by the way, gives us the hope for the resurrection of everyone who died in Christ. Because the Bible says this in verse 22, For as in Adam all died, even so in Christ all shall be made alive, but each one in his own order. Christ the first fruits, afterwards those who are Christ's at his coming. In the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, Paul is revealing an interesting mystery. Paul is saying in Chapter 15, verse 51, Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, and the word sleep means die as a believer, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. And if you really want to understand what it means to be changed in a moment, if you really want to understand what it means to wear incorruptible body, if you really want to understand the mystery solved in regards to that event, if you really want to understand what it means to be taken out of this world and to meet the Lord in the air, that all is in details. That all is in the best way, the best perspective in the book of Revelation. What does it mean, the last trumpet? What does it mean to be chained? Where are we going to be when He's coming to take us? What is going to happen in this world while we are gone? All of these events are detailed in the book of Revelation. So we want to know the book of Revelation, to know where we are going to be, but also to know what is going to be spared from all of us. And this is why it's so important to me to explain the book of Revelation and to give it a greater and wider understanding of that important word of prophecy because it talks about a living God with a message of life to those who belong to Him. And even though death is all over the pages of Book of Revelation, the death of the saints is never something that caused them to perish completely. And also, we must understand that real death, as we can see from the pages of the Book of Revelation, real death is complete separation from God from the presence of God and from the love of God. And this is exactly what my prayer and hope is that all of us will escape the ultimate death.
when Paul wrote to the Thessalonians regarding the rapture of the church, he warned them not to be like those without hope. And it says in verse 13 of chapter 4, I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. So the soul of every believer, even though he died, is with the Lord. And when he comes to take us, he will bring with him the souls of all to be reunite or reunite with a new body that they will receive upon that resurrection. And so I want to encourage all of you to consider the book of Revelation not only to understand world events, but also to understand the source of life, understand the importance of choosing life, and to understand that God is all about life. He is life, he is the way, he is the truth, and he wants to fellowship with us. From the very beginning, he wanted to fellowship with men. It's men who chose not to fellowship with God, who chose to fall in sin, create that separation. And this is exactly why the book of Isaiah says that it's your sins that separates you from God. There is a solution, there is atonement, there is forgiveness, there is new life. You can be a new creation. You might die tomorrow, but you still have the promise of a resurrected body and your soul can be already at His presence. This is our hope as a family. This is my hope as someone who lost quite a few father figures in the last few months. This is my faith. This is my life.